In this episode, Ubuntu 10.10 Beta, Android gains mobile web use, and the Nokia E7. QuickSurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at QuickSurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 7. From the Inquirer, Ubuntu 10.10 beta tips up. The open source goodness of Ubuntu Linux has been given a makeover with a beta version of its 10.10 release. Ubuntu 10.10, codenamed Maverick Meerkat. Yeah! Got some notice in mid-August after Canonical slapped the multi-touch features onto the updated Linux OS. The final version of Maverick Meerkat is still set to appear on the brilliantly chosen release date of October 10th, 2010, which is, if you pay attention, 101010. So uh, pretty neat stuff uh, if the feedback from this beta release doesn't cause any delays. So, you know, it'll be uh, October 10th, uh, 2010. If uh, there are no uh, hiccups in this latest beta release, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the latest version of Ubuntu. Let's go and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend, but the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why go to Assist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it is secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable, can appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast, you'll be on the other computer doing troubleshooting or giving a tutorial or whatever it is you need to do in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From softsailor.com, I ran across this uh, article here, Download Form 5.2.15 Free for Linux. Uh, started in 1998, Forum was the original PHP and MySQL-based open-source forum software. Forum's developers pride themselves on creating a message board software that is designed to meet different needs of different websites while not sacrificing performance or features. So uh, this has a little run-through of what you need to have to run Forum and some of the functionality. Um, it looks pretty neat to me. I've personally never heard of it before, but it very well is possible that it's been around for quite some time. So uh, by all means, if you're in need of uh, some form software, check it out. It's P-H-O-R-U-M, and their uh, version 5 is uh, the latest version according to this. From Market Watch, uh, VMware and Novell deliver SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for VMware. At VMworld 2010, VMware and Novell announced the general availability of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for for VMware, the first step of the company's expanded partnership announced in June of 2010. The solution is designed to reduce IT complexity and accelerate the customer evolution to a fully virtualized data center. With uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for VMware, customers who purchase a VMware vSphere license and subscription also receive a subscription for patches and updates to SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for VMware at no additional cost. Additionally, VMware will offer the option to purchase technical support and services for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for VMware for a seamless support experience available directly and through its network of solution partner providers. So this is kind of cool. Um, for those of you who are using this, this is a huge value add uh, because now instead of having, you know, having to deal with a couple of different vendors to get this thing working, you just deal with one. So that, assuming it's good customer support, that's actually a very good thing to have going. 
From CNET News in the circuit breaker section, Android gains on Apple in U.S. mobile web use. Are you kidding me? (gasps) Oh, the horrors of it. Well, they're not more than Apple's. Um, OS share of mobile mobile web consumption in the U.S., uh, iOS, otherwise known as Apple's iOS operating system, which in, comprises uh, uh, the iPod Touch, the iPhone and its various versions, as well as the iPad. Um, that market share in mobile web usage is 56%. Um, it started off at 70% of May of 2009. As of August of 2010, it's down to 56%. Um, Android started off less than 10% in May of 2009 and has consistently gone up. It's now at 25% in August of 2010. So they're making gains. It'll be a while before they do the little crisscross thing that you, you know, you see in charts. If that ever happens at all, Apple may pull something out of their hat that completely changes the game, um, as they so frequently seem to do. But, uh, nonetheless, uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, who knew, right? Android's actually gaining quite a bit. So uh, we'll see how this goes as time goes on. From CNET Australia, I know that's a horrible way of saying it, but still, from CNET Australia, Nokia's next flagship is E7. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason why I'm even bringing this up isn't so much because it's a phone, it's what it's running. And uh, it says here, the article starts off here, Reuters is reporting that the E7 will be named Nokia's flagship model for the end of 2010, sporting a touchscreen interface, matched with a slide-out QWERTY keyboard, but did not confirm which of Nokia's new operating platforms the E7 will run on, the updated Symbian or the Linux-based Mego platform. Though the tech blog Engadget suggests that it has seen evidence that it will be a Symbian device, which if you ask me personally, that would suck. Badly. Uh, Nokia has been horribly flip-flopping between Symbian and Mego. And, you know, it's like, commit to one already, please. I mean, it's been a couple years now and you keep flip-flopping between, you know, your your, uh, humble little Symbian and doing something that's Linux based. And, you know, it's very confusing to everybody because they would love to have, a, a, you know, a Linux-based smartphone that's a flagship phone from Nokia for those of you who are Nokia users. But at the same time, Nokia keeps, you know, saying, yeah, we're going to do that. And then they don't. And then, yeah, we're going to do that. And then they don't. And then they don't say anything. And then they do do it. You know, and it, it's very confusing. It's like, would you please figure out what you're going to do and do it already? I mean, it would be fantastic if you did. We'd all know what to expect at that point. That's for sure. Only time will tell. Um, We'll keep an eye out on that. From uh, Linux PR, GNU Linux Power State-of-the-Art Hearing Aid Research. This is kind of cool. The next generation of visual hearing aids is being developed and tested on real-time GNU Linux systems from 64 Studio Limited using a dedicated multi-channel audio interfaces and standard Lenovo notebooks. Pretty neat stuff. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the uh, details. If you want to read the story, it's pretty neat stuff what they're doing, and it's all, you know, Linux-driven, so uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite awesome. But uh, check it out by all means. Also from Linux PR, the Linux Professional Institute launches a certified solution provider program. Now, LPI has been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, this is just one more thing in the latest, uh, you know, of stuff that they've been doing. The Linux Professional Institute, the world's premier Linux certification organization, announced a new partner program for technical solution providers and IT service organizations who want to promote their skills and expertise in free and open source software solutions. The Certified Solution Provider Program will be offered to prospective partners this year in Latin America, North America, and Spain, and in 2011 uh, within other regions around the world. So... Kind of neat. Uh, they've already rolled it out in Central Europe and uh, in Japan. So this is going to roll out for the U.S. Let's see if I got this right. Uh, Latin America, North America, and Spain. So keep an eye out for it. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, linux.quicksurf.com. You can uh, follow me on the web, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore bacon. 
And uh, every if you want other ways to get a hold of me, they're also linked up in the show notes, Linux at quicksurf.com, all that good stuff. So uh, visit us, and I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.